Didn't know today would be your last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Always made my Troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me When I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Where God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah
okay here? and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Let us say amen to the reading. Come on, say amen again. Amen. amen. First of all, before I do the official welcome, anybody that is um, due to the health and safety um, rules here, there is no standing in the main sanctuary, so please find a seat. There are some seats that are still available over here. If you have not found a seat, then you would have to stand in the main foyer area. Also, may we add, if anybody has parked on the double yellow lines outside of the building, you may want to go and move your car because the traffic wardens have been around a couple of times already and we don't want them to have a field there today so please move your cars I'm asking you please to silence your mobile phones an act of respect for today's service and please dear if i don't believe that they have a fire drill scheduled so if you hear the alarm Find a door and run. <laughs> Can we clap our hands and give God a praise this morning? Come on, I can't do you a little quiet this morning. Let me welcome you to the celebration of life for Horatio Emmanuel Morgan otherwise known as Sir Christopher. We give God thanks for his life. We give God thanks for his life. Come on, we give God thanks for his life. 
82 years, the Lord has allowed him to be with us. And it is now time that he goes and takes his well-earned rest. And we come to celebrate his life today. Now I know in conversations that I had with him, he said he don't want no dead service. All right, and y'all all know that he was a very lively man. And anywhere that he went, he would change the atmosphere. And he would grab a mic like what I have in my hand right now. And he would, if it wasn't to his fitting and to his standard, he would change it up. All right, so I want you to work with me today as we come to celebrate and to give God thanks for his life. Help me celebrate this wonderful family. Amen. The Morgan family. Put your hands together for the Morgan family. The Morgan tribe, as we call it. I am glad to be a part of it. Amen. I'm going to ask um, if our Bishop Ferrin would come. Amen. With our opening prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name. Our God, our Head. We may despise and we hope for years to come. And we will shelter from this time at last to our eternal home. We come to be before you this day. We reverence your name. We glorify you. Thou art the Lord and beside you there is none other. You are the source of life. You give life and you take life. You are the all almighty and powerful God who sits upon the circle of the earth. The one who eyes like a flaming fire going to and through the earth, beholding everything that takes place on him. We want to thank you for this day. This day is already planned out even before my brother was conceived in his mother's womb. And the time came when you called him home. We thank you for the time that you spent down here. Hallelujah. Now we leave us and come. I pray that your soul will find a resting place with you. And we ask you today as we come in this service, the almighty hand of God, your anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, will lead us and guide us. We can't even walk unless you're holding our hand. But the beauty in the vessel, we can smile at those times as we go sailing on. I pray that you'll bless the minister in charge. Hallelujah. The song that you're going to sing. Hallelujah. I pray that today will be a day of blessing. And your name shall be glorified. Bless everyone. Remember the family. Hallelujah. The loved ones gone before, but help them to know that a little while from this we shall meet again, just over in the glory land. I pray that you will bless in the name of Jesus. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be reverent in all the earth. Hallelujah. I pray your divine leading today for this service. And your name shall be reverent and glorified to all the earth. Bless everyone that comes through this door today. Your name shall be glorified. We thank you in Jesus' name. He taught us to say, Our Father, we art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Thy name is Clap your hands and give the Lord a praise, everyone. Let us sing our first hymn, How Great Thou Art. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, 
Thy healer, rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe is great. Then sing my song, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great. Yeah. 
Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, if he's a great God, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Remain standing. We will have our first scripture reading. Psalms 29, verses 1 through 11. All right, y'all can sit. Okay, y'all can sit. Amen. This will be read by son, Derek Morgan. You can say Good morning, everyone. What should I say, Grand Rory? Or good day. Um, this reading is taken from the Book of Psalms. And it's um, Psalm 29. <clears throat> give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cinders. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them as also to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Siron like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to, to carve, and discovereth the forest, and in his temple doth every one speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Here end of the reading. Amen. Wonderful. Come on, give him another hand. Our second scripture reading will be read by daughter Carol Morgan. And it will be taken from Psalms 23, verses 1 through 6. And I would ask you if you can please stand for this reading. This is for you, Dad. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, 
your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare me, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands again for her, amen. amen. Sing this chord to a couple of times. Some sweet day, I'm going away. I'm going to leave this world, no more to go. Some sweet day. Oh, when I get there, when 
Clap your hands and receive them. Good morning, church, friend, life, everybody. Oh, you look all beautiful. Thank you all for being here today. Um, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, those of the Christian faith. I further greet you in the name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, the first, Jack Rastafari. All right, so let's set this thing um, first for Daddy. So for those of you who know Daddy, Daddy always sent me a scripture reading or something in the morning. We set our day, make it right. So it's got to be fitting for me to give him a blessing. So scripture reading, is from Revelations 21. And I saw Bible. And I saw a great heaven and a new home. The first heaven and the first home passed away and they were no more. And John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of all heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be the people, and God himself shall be with thee and their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from thy eyes, and they shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for me, for more things are passed away. Thank you. Okay, firstly I need to say that I've lost my rock, my dad, and my tribute to him is a story that starts from when um, I was young until now, and to thank him for the significant moments in my life that's brought me to where I am today. Um, so, firstly, I must say that when my back is against the wall, at any time I needed my dad, he was there for me. He was responsible for making my life better in so many ways. 
But firstly, I have to say that my dad wasn't perfect. And lots of you know that, as we all are not perfect. But growing up, my dad was not always there for me. And I used to have people come up to me and say, you're Chris, you're Chris or Christopher, dad, I don't. And I just think, who are they talking about? Who's this man? I don't know him. I don't even know what the fuss is about. I used to, in the market, people stop me and say, go and say hello to your dad, and my name is this, and blah, blah, blah. So many people, as when the house was full, loads of people. But I didn't understand what was all the fuss about until I was about 13, and my friends at school said, Jackie, there go your daddy dance. You know, come. I'm like, I'm 13. I don't even want to even ask mom if I could go, because I couldn't go nowhere. I was the one that was at home, moaning, cooking and cleaning when my brothers could go to road. So I said to my friends, you ask daddy if we can come, I'll see daddy will ask mommy for me. So dad asked mom if I could come to the dance and he would look after me. And it was a big dance in the 70s. So Christopher, Soprano B, Sir Coxon, and I've been Quaker in Northampton. And I was a little child going to a dance that I didn't really understand at, my at the time. But looking back now, that kind of awoken me to who my dad was and what a dance he was. For years and years, we talked about that dance, my friends and everything. And then I remember now growing up in the house with all the blues and all the parties. But I was one of those that couldn't really go out. And I remember I used to sneak out all the time and get beaten. Um, but they used to laugh after me. I said, La, you're getting more speed than Jackie, I get beaten. Come, look, look, look. Um, everybody come laugh. And I used to sneak out to the shops and go to Saints, the youth club. That was my detour, the shops. And take forever. And mum would be waiting for me. And he would know me, come on. So anyway, this one day in the fast of the Ghana youth club, the my Ghana shop, when we look, we said, Daddy, I come up the stairs. Me just wire, down the ramp, and gone. And I thought, where's Daddy at youth club? Daddy's not even at home at seven o'clock in the evening. But I was just afraid of Daddy, because all my friends used to run off and run home at a certain time because their father had come home. And we looked and gone. And we looked and said, no, Daddy. So I didn't, I didn't have to run because my daddy wasn't going to come home at that time. But at that time, that day, he came to the youth club. I was scared because we used to get beaten but we were So we were on, clear gone with Marie's. So we left home and that was it. I said, that's it, I'm not going back home because I'm going to get the biggest piece of my life. Daddy's going to beat me now. He's never beat me before, but he's going to beat me. When I went to my cousin, she said, what happened? I said, Dad, come to the youth club. And she said, oh, what happened? I said, I never stay for, we wait for five hours. Me just run back. So she said, all right, stay tonight and I'll take you home. So she took me home. And then Daddy said, Daddy just looked at and said, you're fool. I was not doing you nothing. I just passed, passed through. So I went, oh, okay. I never get no beaten. So I said, okay. One time now when you're ton, you know, teenager now when you think so well, I'm big now, I should be getting no more beaten and I got beaten, and I decided that, well, that he came and told, took us out, which was a very rare occasion, to his new business in Frontline. And I remember Mom's disappointment and her shock and horror when she saw the big picture of Daddy, on the world, with the two women there, <laughs> And Mommy was not happy. So I remember, because I clocked the way and I clocked the route, to Birmingham, and then one day, I don't know where I got this, 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 this strength for, I said, well, I've had enough for this beat now. I should be able to go out with my brothers and rare, rare, I'm going to find Daddy, now that I know where he lives. Sorry, where he work. And, um, <laughs> so I jumped on the 79 bus that day, tell God if you give me some money, and off I went to find Daddy. And when I arrived at Frontline, I was scared stiff. Took about half an hour to go up the stairs, and as soon as I went in and I got Daddy from behind that room, behind the back, you know that room, big and big. Anyway, um, Daddy come out and I just bawl because it's a really big, big baby, so I just bawl and tell him what happened. And he said, all right, daughter, all right, daughter, stop crying. He said, we're going to get beaten from Daddy, you know, and said warm. And where, where, Daddy just called me 
and carb your own back and set to the man there. So, me that I pay for babs. She won't let babs and come to me. Ah, <laughs> daddy. And big up in chess. And then I thought, well, okay, you can take me home. Daddy said, come. And put me around the side of the, the, the reception and say, when you answer the phone, I don't want to hear no patwa because I bring it to England, you speak English. And I wanted to answer the phone and say, hello, front line, I'm cross. And I was business. Before I know it, I was there for a couple of years. So I have to thank Daddy for my first job and my first experience, work experience. Another time now I have to thank Dad for is that I had um, lost touch with him after he, he and my mom split up when he went to Bristol. And he was at um, his food shop now. And I had a little bit of problem. I was saved for my house and lost some money, gave some bit of lend and didn't come back. So I just picked up the phone and bar and I cried to Daddy. And Daddy said, come, pack your bag, come, come, come to Bristol and for the weekend. So this time I think I was going to get a little help, a little loan in my hand. No. I was one of those lucky daughters who got anything I wanted there and then. I had to work for it. And some long hours. Yeah? So Dad said, come, come daughter, come round just the counter. This is for that money, that is for that and that and your help and your serve the woman, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. So I was there for a weekend and I thought that was it. Then he called me back and he said, well, daughter, um, I saw your work and you work very well and everybody asked for you, so you're welcome. I need some help. But then he said, come next weekend and you can work for me. I was there for three or four years. But dad helped me yet again. He was always there when you needed him. It. He wasn't always there growing up. He wasn't the kind of dad that took you to school or took you here, there, or anywhere. He wasn't even domesticated. He didn't know about us, what we needed in terms of as a you know, father in the house. But when we needed him and when I called him, he was always there. So I need to give him thanks and praises for that. He also told me when he found out that I was a Rasta. My mum said, hey, now we have the daddy come for you with this one, yeah. Yeah, wait till your daddy come home. That was the first and last time she said that. Because mum was always there. Mum always was looking out for us. And I know now, mum was, you know, shielding me, protecting me. But when I was arrested now, she knew dad was going to be really disappointed. Because he would go away man, grew off it, be posh, to the rasta. So daddy called me one day and he said, what is going on? And he come to, he come to England for you to be better life. And I come for you to be on rasta because I'm not like rasta. So dad was talking to me, giving me a couple of reasoning, and I was giving him back reasoning. And he said, but wait. So I gave him a quote, a quote from the Bible, and answered everything he had to throw at me. Mom said, wait, you're going to make sure talk to you like that. And he took up the nearest thing could I find was one matches box, I'm sure it's happened. Mom said, what can I kind do? But mom, we get beat, we we'll get beat, we we'll belt. And then he just said, all right, Dada. I want you to do one thing for me, go to college and be somebody. And I thought, is that all I had to do? Just to keep Daddy quiet? And I could be a Rasta. So that's what I did. And my first certificate I brought, brought it to him. Up to this day, he will brag and boast with data. And now he says, my Rasta data. <laughs> you see, she got to do it for me and she'll bring her certificate. And now she's this and she's that. And if you know Dad, and if, if, you, if I get introduced, you know what I'm talking about. So I just want to finish off and say, those significant moments in my life were very important. Um, my guardian and my protector in times of need, how I need you now and how you are missed. I had to work hard for everything that you gave me, but I thank you for that and for the support that you gave me throughout my life. Um, you gave me the training that I needed in terms of work and to be a professional practitioner that I am today. He was my role model in terms of the few words that he needed to say as a child would say to the mother or their father when they wanted to do good. Those little words stay with you for life. This has helped me throughout my life, successes, and I thank Dad for his marketing, love, help, support, reassurance, and the calm nature that he had, and along with his loud voice and bashful uh, stance, that he is the legend my dad. Um, when we fall out, 
he would always try and make it up. Or if I fell out, the next day I'd have to be ruining me to say I'm sorry. And that's how close we became. So even though we weren't close growing up for the last couple of years, especially when I was taking care of him up until he died, um, meant a lot to me. So Dad, as you always say to me, when you send me a morning text and you reply, I will always love you, daughter. I will always love you, Daddy, like you say to me. Rest in the pearl of peace and have ever turned everlasting, eternal life, the eyes of paradise, Daddy. I don't know if we've got the tribute songs or the music for it, but there was a song we were supposed to sing for Daddy. Um, um, not here, I'm just going to say the words for now. It's a tune by. Give a hand for my friend Gorn, Gorn Graham, who's going to see you this evening. I used to drive to work every morning to work. I'm here this show, and I said, right, this is for Daddy. Don't laugh after me, okay? I'll sing all that you know, so. And I try a little thing for Daddy, so. Let's be able to
Our next tribute will be coming from the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. Amen. And there's a whole lot of us. All right, gonna ask all the grandchildren and great grandchildren just to stand. I'm not gonna ask you to come up here, but just stand. All the grandchildren and great grandchildren. Amen. Who's coming to do the tribute? Clap your hands and welcome them, welcome them. Come on, do better than that. Remembered and your spirit lives on in us all forever. Our all the special gifts in life, however great or small, to have you as our granddad was the greatest of them all. Even through there's even though there's no more tomorrows we can share, the yesterdays are always there. Deep in our hearts, memories of you are kept to love, cherish, and never forget. You love for being great in our hearts forever and ever. If love, could have, if love could have saved you, we still have you here with us today. Our great granddad was one of the kind that it breaks our hearts to be standing here saying these words. See you well in heaven, heaven now, granddad. We love you very, very much. Come on, give it a better hand, granddad. Right now we'll be having another tribute, and this will be coming um, from Sun Sun, Amen. First cousin. Clap your hands and receive them. Glad to see everybody and you know we expect this crowd anyway so we are look forward to see everybody here. You know, a man come from Ali we are from London and blind can't see but never talk call me. The sun's on me, happy there. And it is here. Mooney, put up your hand like them see you. Yes man, yeah man. Yes. Thanks. You know, you know, maybe it's not one of the best talkers, but you don't know, my cousin. Why? You don't know what he said. You don't know what happened, but I saw it go. And, you know, let's still be Sir Christopher. And bless you. Everybody miss you. And, why? I don't even know what to say. Don't I'm so scared. I have been this. Last year, before Christmas, I said, I'm going to make a decision. 
It's always on my mind. Someday I leave this world behind. For so hard to lose your loved ones to the grave. But I know you have the strength that Jesus gave. When God shall wipe all those tear drops from your eyes. When you meet him in the land beyond the sky. It's always on my mind. Someday I leave this world Our next tribute will be coming um, from Anika Morgan, daughter. Amen. This will be followed by a song by Gramps Morgan, People Like You. Clap your hands and receive her. <laughs> Following her, we will go straight to the family friend, Michael Miles. If you could get ready to come immediately after Anika. Thank you. This is the hardest thing I've had to write, and I only managed to put pen to paper in the early hours of this morning. Before I go any further, I would like to thank my Uncle Paul and Jenny. Jenny, can you come up please? For giving me the opportunity to meet my dad and have a relationship with my dad. But let me just tell you the story about how I met my dad in Bristol. I used to live in Germany, I grew up in Germany, and I came over and my uncle Paul said, would you like to meet your dad? I said yes, at age 24. 
from my now have it is when you know that is good and good boy and have picked me outside and you know. So I'm trying to taste this. That wasn't there. But, oh, but Jenny was there. Fred, your daddy's been talking about you so much and it's my 40th birthday in May and he's in Jamaica but he has to come back for my birthday. And, you know, a young lady growing up. So Jen, don't really have the money like that to come back so soon. But don't worry. Tell me how much and I will send you the money. So said, so done. So, day of the party. My uncle Paul again drives me to Bristol. Then he meets me outside, pulls me through the crowd. The dad behind the counter. And he said, Jenny, which one are your family this? <laughs> Jenny said, No, not my family, yours. And he said, What's your name? He said, Onika. Daddy said, No, not, and give the whole of my government name. <laughs> And my date I've heard. <laughs> and I said, yes, I am. And he crying. Daughter, I'm a long last daughter. And he, he didn't want to let me go. I've had some lovely times with that. Daughter. We need to go to London. He's driving it. <laughs> we play music, we talk, we laugh, and the journey was lovely. Dad? <laughs> this is your last journey. And I thought, who oh, with you? But the memories always in my heart. I love you, Dad. just like to say I've spent more than half my life on the journey with Mr. Morgan and it's been great. Not all the time, but most of the time. I have great memories no one can take away. And I've met great people along the way. And I can say that the respect and the love that I feel in this house today is overwhelming. Well done, Mr. Morgan's family. You have a beautiful family. Cherish them. Stay together. This is the time for unity. Chris loved unity and oneness. We're going to have a great time later on. I don't want to shed any tears. He wouldn't want that. So, enough love, respect, and I show honour to you, Mr. Morgan.
Good evening. Wow, I'm on the outside of your nice meal now, make so what I can't say something now. Good evening. I don't know already say pokey a man we make nice man. And I ask Bill want to say something, but we don't say nothing long, long thing. I know this man a long, 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 long time from he come in now, yeah. And he come in 1960. And we are so sad to hear him too. So you know what we mean. <laughs> we stray. But as I said, I remember first time this man had to do something for me, you know, and I respect it. I say I go and get married, and he called me down in the yard. And the night, he get me drunk, he's way up on Lee Road, and he top them, come, come find me. <laughs> <laughs> drunk the night, when Bob's asked, where Michael then? Nobody can find me. Next thing, all I remember is Tapali Road. I walk down. So I have to give thanks and praise to this man. Because I used to drive him van with him sound. London, Bristol, Manchester, all about. And he still owe me because I never get paid. <laughs> Serious thing, man. Never get paid. I just drive the van with the song, come back to Birmingham, and he's, Why are you alright, Michael? You alright, Miles? Say, Yeah, man. But I tell you something, Sir Christopher, rest in eternal peace. Everybody in here love you. Thanks. We're going to have a tribute for the son, Andrew Morgan, my dad. Clap your hands, receive him. Come on, do better than that now. Yo, yo. I say it again. Greet and come listen to one another. He come on here, man, said you have got it like PL9, you know, and you food. Yeah, yeah. Right. You got I that better. I say again, greeting and blessing. Who know me, don't know me. Alright, my daddy near me, Rocky. Not because I walk so enough. Yeah. Because I wrap up the chair with my little boy. See? Anyway, you never dare when my old man drop out. See? Step on the rock. Who know the rock? Who yeah. know the rock? Yeah. Alright. That's a sad day, boy. I cut and got you. I'm in him own town, you know. Who know him own town? Spanish town. Alright. See? I get a phone call from one of my sisters, I can't remember which one. Claudie, Claudie, Claudie. See? Yo, I tell you, tell you, rough. Lick me, lick me, lick me. But no, lick me the day still, you know. And when I reach back from my yard, I go up on the veranda, I look out, and I ball like a baby. What me say? Ball like a baby. Alright, from my ball, I'm good. Because my daddy is a cheerful man. And he said to me, say, you know, one of dead tax thing, you know, man. I don't want to come sit down and I'm in the night, you can't hear no. All right, let me say now. I want to know how to be on the best day ever today. Now, anyone get trouble, we are thrown out, you know. <laughs> See? What do you hear me? What do you say? <laughs> All right. I don't know if you can see that I look like my daddy. Yeah. What do you say? Good? Yeah. All right, give thanks. So we give thanks to the heart, take from the time and get up this morning. Want to make it a bit? Yeah. All right, here we say now. Give thanks and praise on our turn this morning. I want you to be able to serve, have a nice time, love and peace. Peace.
Come on, clap your hands again. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we're going to have a little musical tribute. All right, well, um, she's coming. Winsome Moncrief Mitchell. If they could get ready. Hi everyone. So I'm actually following the trend of my uncle because he loves to grab the mic. So may I grab the mic? I'm much of the place. So I knew my uncle from I was a child in Jamaica. Every time he visited, he would come and see us. And to be honest, he was actually the only male figure in my life. He always said, "What daughter? My favorite niece." But just recently, I discovered that it's the same. Line it in two upon Lorraine. Say, all right, Lorraine. The two of us have worked with it. We are favorite niece. When times were down, I could count on my uncle to give me a change. We even travel up to our spot and go, I will make again, up at Bristol. Mm. When times were rough, my uncle was there. Um, I would normally get those um, spiritual texts every morning as well. I remember even, even within COVID, we had a chat. He, we spoke about vaccine and stuff, so he was very much a part of my life, and I do love my uncle. Big up my uncle. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Sir Christian Pierce, respect. Thank you. Drop your hands for the Amen. Wonderful. Winston. Amen. Moncrief Mitchell will come. Clap your hands and welcome her. Thank you. Good afternoon, Church. Um, I met Sir Chris about 40 something years ago when I worked for him at Frontline, okay, with Andrew in the taxi. I ran, and as you know, he's a funny person, no filter. You know, he was great actually because he'd protect me from some of the guys from the gambling house. And I remember when I moved to London and I brought my boyfriend down for the first time and I introduced you to Sir Chris and Chris looked at him and said, Are you fine? I'm in some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the man left me or whoever left me and drove all the way back to London. <laughs> and then um, I was doing a show for Soji in Bristol and all of a sudden I see Sir Chris just jump and say, Yes, we know I win some, you know I from the left wing. <laughs> It's just a joke, it's a beautiful present. And I too miss them texts that he used to send every morning. And I also will always remember that we plan to meet up on the 9th of March in Bristol. That's just so sad. But anyway, I'm gonna do a little medley for you. Take from this medley what you can, all right? There's a little bit for the family, a little bit for the children and the grandchildren, and a little bit for all the friends, all right? And please join me. And we will make it noisy for him, and you will know some of the songs, all right? So the first one is basically, Further along with you, understand why. Further along with you, know all about it. Cheer up, sweet family. Live in the sunshine. You'll understand it. Oh, by and by. And for the children, back when you were a child, before they removed all the innocence, your father would lift you up, spin you around till you fell asleep. Then upstairs he would carry you And you knew for sure you were loved If you could get one final chance One final dance One final smile with him You'd play a tune that would never 
ever end. How you love, love, love to dance with your father again. How you love, love, love to dance with your father again. Just sing me that we're blessed. We're blessed, he's blessed because we woke up this morning, alright? So Chris is blessed. He was blessed every day of his life. He was blessed when he woke up in the morning and he laid his head to rest every day of his life. He was blessed. Take him to the king. We don't have much to bring. Our hearts is torn in pieces. He's our offering. Take him to the throne. Leave him there alone. To look upon God's glory. Leave him there alone. Swing low, sweet chariots coming forth to carry Sir Chris home. Swing low, sweet chariots coming forth to carry him home. We looked over Jordan. What did we see coming forth to carry Sir Chris home? A band of angels coming here for him, coming forth to carry him home. Go time with your neighbor, the true Chris style, because they're a lo lovely person. Peace and unity. Just reach out and touch. Somebody's hands make this world a better place. If you can, reach out and touch somebody's hands, make this world a better place. If you can, praise God, praise God. Praise God, 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 praise God. Rest in peace, Mr. Morgan. Be the power of the Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Right now, we have the reading of the eulogy. Reading of the eulogy. This will be done by daughter Jackie Morgan and supported. Clap your hands and receive it, amen. Amen. Good evening, good afternoon again, everyone. Horatio Morgan, aka Chrissy, Sir Christopher, born 11th December 1941 in Spanish town in the parish of St. Catherine, to, per to parents Harold and Lucy Morgan. He has a sister, Iona, a Miss I, from same mother. He had an elder brother, George, deceased, and he survived by sisters Margaret and Pamela Morgan. 
He went to nursery school in Spanish town and then went to barrack school. His mother passed away at age nine and he went to live with his auntie, Lily in Kingston, who looked after him and we've been told spoiled him. He was educated in Kingston at Greenwich Farms Junior School and was schooled with the likes of John Holt and the Schreiber brothers, George and Danny. After leaving school, he was fascinated by watching the men doing welding in their protective uniforms. It was then his dream job and he fulfilled this ambition to become a welder. He went and did his training and became qualified. His family had businesses and he got involved, which was a bicycle shop in Spanish town and other various businesses. Dad would commute between his dad and Auntie Lily and he would go out with his dad in his truck and got to grips with all the different businesses. And whilst at his dad, he would take the truck and drive it without a license and started uh, driving at an early age and would be told off by his brother George because he shouldn't have been doing those things at his age. His dad had his own band and this is where dad developed his passion for music, hence the musician and the ability for entertainment when he was in his blood from the very start. He was so mature for his age um, in terms of how he looked, his stature, and um, he could get a job um, at a business firm before he was at the age two. When his auntie found out what dad was doing and the trouble he started to get into, because he started getting fights, his auntie came to take him back to Kingston. Said enough of all this running around in Spanish town. And, you know, dad was becoming flamboyant. He dressed smart. He had the eyes for the ladies. And this is where his gallus and womanizing started. He could even get girls, I was told mom, by mom, that older than himself. Um, and he met my mom and pursued her for three years. And we come to see her on a motorbike. He was a flamboyant youth, and he had the girls running after him. And he continued to do this throughout his life. <laughs> However, he was sent to England. Auntie Lily said, enough is enough now. We don't want you to be a bad boy. And she thought the best thing to do was to send him to England. And Dad arrived in England on his own, and he lived in West Bromwich. And um, as he was a qualified welder, he could get work. He was 16 at the time, and he went straight into employment, because jobs were plentiful, as you know, in the 1960s. Um, as he came to the country, the curl, you know, the Woodruff, Woodruff time for call for help. And um, when, even though he lived in his one room, he used to come to my grandma, who used to have to feed him. My daddy couldn't cook. I'll feed himself. And she used to fat, fat up him in uh, food uh, flask with 13 dumplings. And that's when, you know, Porky, here's it. He persuaded my grandma to send for his daughter, my mom, to come to England, and the rest is history. He worked in various places and got to the minimum wage of four pounds to start with. He could pick and choose where to go, for a better paid job. He could go for in interviews and be tested on the standard of his welding work and would pass them every time. He was encouraged to get even a better paid job. For example, he went to work at Ruby Owens in Darlington, owned by the Americans. It was the top firm, and Dad was the youngest one working there and became one of the best welds in town. He used to have two pay packets, and he would brag, as you know, and brag, I'm boss. To me, mother, you see, you see, a two pay packet, me, half. You yeah, understand, man, the best welder in town. I can just imagine my talk can go on with itself. As he was very confident, professional, charismatic, and hardworking, and determined to be the best that he could, what he, whatever he did, he was the best. He further stepped up and got a better job in Nottingham at the power station. He explained to my mum that uh, he would have to inspect all of the other workers. He would have to pass by him, and if it was the good standard, he would send it back. He was acting as a supervisor, but in those days it was difficult and rare for a black man to have a managerial position. But this is what he did, and this was the good training for his life 
ahead of him to come. And he would say to my mum that he doesn't want to work for anybody, he wants to work for himself. But he did this for a few years. And Dad was really on, you know, the nine to five job, but we wasn't able to see that because he soon got mixed up in the street life and turned to sound system. He first played on the sound of Sala Sound and found that he was good at this. As you know, he can talk and have the sweet words and, you know, everybody liked that vibes. And he fell in love with it and found another way to make money. He then brought um, the sound of Duke Sonny, the top sound in Birmingham at the time, and started to keep dances, sound clashes and blues, especially in our house. My poor mum, he'd chop up the house, mash up the house, bring up, bring up the host. They came to mum and said, take him to a dance hall because he'd knock out one room and made it into a bigger room so that blues could go on. I used to hate those days, to be fair. I did, because we couldn't go. As soon as the door locked, grandma used to say, come, when I got in the bed, Kind to go to the bed now. And I don't know how we could have sleep because we had single ply windows in those days. So Anna used to lie down by the bed, by the window, and all he could hear was do 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 And he used to think that the window's gonna rock on top of me, and she put the cover over me, the tissue and on his ears, quantum wood, everything to try to sleep, couldn't sleep. We used to spend the day, wouldn't be down in mom's room, back room to see who's coming, who's here, look at the road, lying with the cars. That was the days in our mom's house. So dad called the sound, Sir Christopher Sound, and he played in places like Villa Street, Horse and Jockey, the 67 Club, and right here in, Wolver in Temple Street was the 67 Club, and all over the country. Played sounds like Sir Coxon, Quaker, Jashaka, and amongst others, and um, with artists like John Holt, and became one of the biggest music business, and had many titles, sorry, the biggest sound in Wolverhampton and West Midlands. He's turned his sound um, to be able to travel up and down the country and this was during the 60s, 70s and 80s. Dad then became a businessman and the skills and the experience that he acquired in living in Jamaica, he, he set up his first business which was a record shop in Solid Street in the 1970s in Wolverhampton. I don't know if anybody here can remember that shop but I remember going in there and looking at it and thinking, oh, we got it our shop. But there was no sweetie. He, he created jobs as an employer for many people and served the community. The business was successful and was extended into a place where dances could also take place. This was that front line, but Daddy left before it became the dungeon, um, which was, I think, a good thing. After my dad um, sold the business in the 19s, in the 90s and 2000s, he set up Tasty's English and Caribbean restaurant in St. Paul's, Bristol. He also set up Jenny's liquor, um, um, liquor shop off license. Yet again, he was an employer, a manager, and managed a business which provided more than one service. So it was a takeaway, restaurant, and shopping. Get the theme running again? And parties could take place in that small establishment, and I heard that there would be a queue outside and people waiting to get in. And as I remember when I worked there, we used to have people travel from far to come and get food and would be sold out. But that used to have me working there for 12 hours straight, serving food to eight o'clock in the morning. We thought Dad had retired after Tasty's and he had an illness and um, we tried to retire him, but could not stop him. Dad started playing out again and continued to work and kept busy and active and enjoyed his life to the full. Did what Dad would have been bored and so continued to do his own thing. And was also planning to set up another business before his death. This is something we must carry on to ensure that the Sir Christopher Foundation lives on and also to honour and remember our dad's achievements, entertainment and creativity wherever he, not, wherever he was knocked down or made mistakes, he would rise up and build and come again. We loved his, he loved his sport and was a devout Manchester United fan and was also a season ticket holder. This is how obsessed he was, a loyal fan and this is where he got his name, Man U. I remember going in Tasty's when I was there, somebody come and say, Manu, where Manu there? And I looked at him, I said, Manu, nobody here is named Manu. Somebody to touch him and said, Jackie, that is your dad. Yeah. And when Man United lost, dad would disappear. Couldn't find him anywhere. He said, Data, anybody phone or ask me, tell them that they are becoming tickets serious. Man United lose something I want to So he um, he was a larger than life character who explained, enjoyed his life to the full. I remember him saying, Data. When I said, tell him, Dad, you've got to pay the bills, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. I said, Data, I want life to have. 
and now I've got to live it. And that's what he did. It wasn't for paying bills, it was for spending money. He surely did that. And how we and our mom suffered, because fame and fortune comes with a cost, and sacrifices had to be made. When you are rising to the top of your successes, it meant, it meant living away from home, which caused a lot of pain and luck of a father figure at times. But dad made up for this as we grew up in various different ways, as mentioned in our tributes, especially when he came back to Wolverhampton in the last three years. He has now gone the full circle and returned home to the place where his life, career and his family started when he came from Jamaica. This is where his story started and ended. Dad unfortunately died on the 11th of, Ju 11th of January 2024. was a shock and a distressing outcome. But one of the last things he said to me when in hospital, when the phone kept ringing, I said, Dad, put the phone down, rest a little bit. He said, Dad, I'm a popular, you know. As you can see, you're all here today to verify that. Um, I would like to thank the community for your support, especially when we didn't get Dad's cause of death, which took a lot of weeks and a lot of time. It was very um, traumatic. And the people, close family and friends, who used to give us, give us support, said, don't worry, no matter how long it takes, just have to go, go, go through with it. And that's what we had to do. Dad knighted himself as Sir. Let's face it, Queen Elizabeth wasn't going to give him this title, was he? So knowing Dad as the man and the legend he is, he did it himself. He did not care what anybody said about him because he knew he was special, as we all are in our own rights. And I'm now going to take a leaf out of Dad's book to live each day as it is my last. My mum told us many stories, good and bad, growing up, looking back to laugh at this icon, the legend, our dad, black business celebrity, well-known, well-respected, well-loved, gone but never will be forgotten. He was a family man who loved all his children and was proud of us all. There will be never be a man like him, confident character, smart, intelligent, loved by many, kind and caring, considerate to others, and would always give a helping hand or a job to those in need. It didn't always pay the white wages, but didn't give you a job. And a characteristic by businessman, bubbly, lively, and he was the life and soul of the party. And now to know, to, sorry, now to make, and knew how to make you happy and feel good. He's survived by his children, Gary, Derek, Andrew, myself, Carol, Claudine, Anika, and Joshua, and many stepchildren, sorry, um, Sabrina, Jerome, and Jensen, I know they call him dad, and dad's got adopted children as well. The son, and people we never know, I'm a son, I'm, I'm a daughter, we don't know them, but I'm a son, I'm a brother, brother, your sister, them. In my heart, he loved looking after people, I mean, people called him father, should have called him King Chris. Rest in eternal peace, everlasting life in paradise, and as you always used to say to me, I will always love you, my daughter, and I will always love you, my dad. Can we all stand, everyone stand, everyone stand, as we have heard the eulogy, it's a great life that has been lived, and I want you to put your hands together as we give God thanks and salute Sir Christopher, come on, do better than that now, come on. You've heard a story of his life. Come on, come on, come on. Do better than that, man. And while we're clapping, let us honor the matriarch of the Morgan family. We call her Babs. Come on, help me. Thank God for her. Come on, man. Clap the girls that man. Amen. Please receive our Minister Patricia May and she will come with final words of comfort for today's service. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. The reason I'm thanking you, we had the conversation. Thank you. Mrs. Morgan, thank you. My condolences to the Morgan, immediate and extended family. Nothing I can say will always 
or take away the pain you are experiencing right now. Just want you to know that I care about all you all and I share your sadness. May you look back on the precious moments, memories and find peace in time spent with your father. The scripture, our Bible reading, I should read. Take me back to the time when I first met Sir Christopher. And those of you who are walking and going and whatever, remember all oh, when all been said, the sermon is part of the serious part of any funeral service, along with the memories of the immediate family. So I ask you if you could just give me a little bit of the time while you just stay still for me. As um, Mr. Morgan would say, Ragamuffin, pat me, a preacher in town. Yes, I am. That's what he calls me. His Ragamuffin preacher. And I stand accounted to that name because I'm a community person. I'll read it. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 8, and then I'll just um, run through what it really means. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones. And a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. This is where Christopher is in a time of peace. Andrew and your brother sitting next to you. God bless you. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. To every Christian burial, there is a serious side to all what is said and done by allowing the sermon of the Word of God be preached. A reflection on the significance of time and season of our life, especially during the period of mourning and remembering. In the doctrine, today we gather to remember and find comfort in the midst of Mr. Morgan, you're lost. Prenel serves as a time for reflection and solace. In the book of Ecclesiastes, Elas King Solomon wisely reminds us that there is a season for everything under heaven. This Bible passage speaks to the very stage and emotion that we experience throughout the life. Let us explore its timeless wisdom. The season of life, a time to be born and a time to die. Life is fragile, and each of us has a limited time on this earth. We are born into this world, and eventually we all face death. It is a natural part of our existence. A time to plant and a time to uproot. They, just as there is a season for planting seeds and uprooting the plant, our life goes through cycles of growth and change. We sow seeds of dreams and aspiration. But sometimes we must support uproot. What no longer serves us a time to tear down and a time to build up. Life presents us with opportunity to tear down old structures and build new ones. We may need to make go of an unhealthy habit. We may need to let go of an unhealthy habit or relationship to make room for positive growth. 
a time to weep and a time to laugh. Emotions are an integral part of our human experiences. There are moments of sorrow and mourning, but also times of joy and laughter. We must allow ourselves to feel and express those emotions fully. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A grief is a natural response to loss, and it takes time to heal. However, there, are time, there comes a time when we can find solace and embrace the joy of life once again. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. Life is filled with moments of conflict and reconciliation. We may find ourselves in situations where we need to comfort or forgive others. Ah, both actions and have their appropriate times and place. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. Relationship plays a significant role in our lives. There are times when we need to embrace others and love and compassion. And there's a time when we must eat, set boundaries for our well-being. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. We go through seasons of seeking knowledge, uh, understanding the purpose. However, there are times when we must accept that some things are beyond our grasp and let go of our relentless pursuit. The conclusion is, uh, we, as we reflect It is a crucial to cherish the relationship we have to make the most of every season. Today we mourn the last of our loved one, Mr. Morgan, Sir Christopher. We also celebrate his life and the memories we share. May we find comfort in the promise that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us in him. We find hope and eter in eternal Life. It is interesting that oh, several thousand years ago, Solomon penned these words that seem so inappropriate uh, for us today. For everything, there is a season, a time to be born and a time to die. In season, in an instant, in one short sentence, the author has expressed how fragile life is. There is a time to be born and a time to die. It may be, it may that most important questions we can answer, it is what time is all about. We know that we are creatures of time by the way we set our clocks and watches so that we will know what we hear it is. If we have the schedule and appointments set by dates on a calendar, we know larger amount of time by measuring the months and the years. We also know the season of spring, summer, winter, and autumn. But perhaps time should be measured in more than hours or days or years. And I come to the end. We have already mentioned some dates here today. The date Mr. Morgan was born. And I too was born on the 11th of December. He knew that. We shared the same birthday. The date he died, and so we know that he lived for 82 years short years. We have measurement of time, and some of us are sitting here thinking that he lived a full long life. Others are thinking like his daughter, for example, Jackie, and the rest of the family are thinking that his life was cut too short. But isn't life more than a measurement of years of accomplishment? If you never remember what I say today, as I speak to each and every one of you here today, remember this, there's an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven when we will be judged 
by Jesus Christ, Lord of our Savior, who first died for us all. God bless you all. Thank you for so attentively listening to what I have to say, the Word of God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Everyone stand. Everyone stand. We're going. I'm going to ask the poor bearers to please get ready. I'm going to ask our Bishop Cumbry just to come and to pray the closing prayer and also the family prayer. After this, we will be journeying to Danes Court Cemetery. And after Danes Court, the family are inviting you back to Wolverhampton Race Course for the aftermath. Please bow your heads for the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your presence this afternoon. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Father, we thank you for the life of Mr. Morgan, Lord God. A life well lived and spent. Father God, we, we place the family, Lord, before your presence, the Morgan family, Lord God, and we pray that you'll continue to comfort them and strengthen them, Lord, as they pass through this season. Father God, that you will be their guide. Lord God, that you will be their protector. Father, we pray right now. Lord, as we finish and close this service. Lord God, we pray for journey mercies. Lord God, as we go to lay into rest. Father God, we pray your blessings upon each and every vehicle as we make our way. Lord God, and bless the evening proceedings. Father God, we tell you thanks for your goodness and your mercy. And we thank you for life and we give you glory, honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please remain in your seats until the family has left.
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe when your day's down here through There's a place up there for people like you If you walk around your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when your days down here or through there's a place up there for people like you Thank <laughs> you. 
loud in church isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which one is that one? Yeah.
Celia. Hey. Don't get nervous. Yeah? We are put on the 
sing a parent card, don't get nervous. Yeah? Take your time. Go and do it again. Take your time. Take your time. Let me start so let me start playing a one of the Sir Christopher. All who there for Sir Christopher means a right hand of the ear. And let me see what I'm going in here so right now. Everybody feel a singing on the place right now. That's who we are feeling. Yeah? This is this is good. First move is this is your one your special cut. Sir Chris, rest in peace here, man. I'm not a girl society. Big up circus for the public. Look, sir. I'm not a king, just a man. Please, Papa, keep the time on the I'm not a girl. Yeah, 
it doesn't make it. So, I'm healthy, I'm gonna go. So, we've got, she's coming, she's coming. Let's see. Oh, bless her. 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 Come through, come through, Rose and Gorn. Oh, each and every single time. Big up yourself. Big up yourself. From the Morgan family, Jackie, and the family, God, big up yourself. Who else? Who else? Who recording? Rose, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? You see her? Where is she? Okay. Hey, hey, okay. All right, come through, come through, come through. Big up yourself each and every single time. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Max and every step, big up yourself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. Big up yourself to Morgan family and everyone that's come out to celebrate the life of my friend, my big friend, Sir Christopher. Jackie, you want to say something? All right, DJ. I ain't talking too much, you know. My name is TMB. Oh, you know. Track the track, track the track, track the track. Right about now. Harry, Andrew, give up yourself.
And when you love, you should not say, the Lord is in my heart. You should say, I'm in the heart of the Lord. And when he assigns you to your sacred vow, fear not, for you shall not be burned. His love is to melt you like a rippling brook.